And so you see people like Ed Cherney, and you see some of the other people that are around, you see Ben Consolidate and so on and so forth. In order to get that career, it goes past just learning and being in the right place and all the time. Now you have to think outside the box. Now your world is global. Man, I love you, man. I just want to tell you, this guy is everywhere we go. He doesn't live in LA, and he's a man. The passion is just insane, and we're an example of that opportunity. Two old dudes who had an idea two years ago, now is in 250 countries. We have 90 colleges that use us as curriculum. It's just insane. I had to leave my full-time job just to manage all the piss out of work. And probably, and I'll stop with this, there he is, John Nelson. John. John. Okay. Say, clap your hands for John Nelson. Whenever you hear about Michael Jackson's estate, what goes on musically with it, what goes on with the shows, the Cirque du Soleil, all that kind of stuff, they are going through his hands. He's a supremely talented guy and a, and a family friend of ours. So another round of applause. Anyways, that means we stepped out of the box. We're a lot older than you guys. And we stepped way the hell out of the box. Nobody here was a broadcaster. Nobody here was a television person. Nobody. So for us to have our own television studio and to have programming and have people flying from all the country and meet with us means we had to learn. And we had to put ourselves out there. And it ain't that much fun when people can comment right away. But we did. So you have no reason not to. And that's where you're going to find your attraction. You're going to find it. Don't get locked into a box, not musically, not technically. Reach, stretch, reach. Did you agree? 100%. I think the future is, is less about specialization and more about uh, mastering one thing well, but at the same time mastering a lot of different things. I, I think you have, to have, you have to be known for one thing, but you have to be good at everything. And you get your foot in the door with that one thing, and then, and then my, my assistant calls over there, and, and uh, Cole has his laptop. He'll actually go to a client. He'll record the vocals with his laptop. He'll I'll go to another client the same day and uh, do a quick mix for them. And they'll come back to the studio and work with me and then put some headphones on, tweak mixes. And I think that's the future of, of the thing we love, the passion we love. I, don't think, I, don't, I think that the career of solo mixing has probably got a little bit of a time limit to it. Don't you think, Ed? I hope not. <laughs> but but it's fun to do it all. When I first started, I didn't know there was separations of of um, the various responsibilities. So, did you want to get some questions, or we want to do something else? Yeah, look, it's free form. If you guys have questions, fire them at us, and we'll come up with stuff for you guys. And lots of different things you can go. You know, technical things. You want to hear about your career and sort of the business side. In fact, I just did two rooms for Dave last night, and I was telling him. You know, on the contractual side for engineers, in case anybody asks these questions, it's a very funny place to be. A lot of people say, oh, I want points, I want to look at agreement, and I tend to call them moot points, and all the time, <laughs> uh, because they ultimately, uh, oftentimes, don't Are you talking about John? Huh? Are you talking about John? No, no, no. <laughs> John's points are different. Okay. Michael Jackson. <laughs> that's, that's a good point you want to have. 